Yeah, amen. Yeah. I tell you what, folks, don't ever get past the fact that we surrender our life at the cross and, and uh, that we have Jesus Christ in our life. Um, I think sometimes we, we get so worked up with the things of the world that forget that we're serving the creator of the world. Uh, this morning, I want to talk to you about the right help. And have you ever been doing something, you knew you were doing it the right way? You knew beyond a shadow of a doubt there wasn't a question. This is, there's no other way this can be done. Uh, not too long ago, uh, I was blessed uh, with a lawnmower that had been sitting outside for three years. And um, <laughs> don't laugh, Lillian, it was yours. And, um, you know, but I just had to get it running. And I, I tell you what, folks, uh, I owned a lawn maintenance company a long time ago, and, and uh, so I had to learn how to do all that. I'm not a mechanic. I, I can't come to your house. I don't even know how to fix this one, okay? I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, but I couldn't get this one bolt to come loose. I, 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 you know, I sit there, I kept trying to turn it. I oiled it. I beat it. I, I thought things that I know I should never say, but I thought them. And um, I was so mad. You know, I, I mean, I decided I'm going to rip this bolt off into eternity. I just get another bolt. Bolts are cheap. So uh, I went over there and sat down and, um, and everything and uh, had, was able to get some instructions. And, and I thought, well, I'm going to go sit here and sit down, calm down before I kill this lawnmower. I mean, I'm going to kill it. it. It deserves death now. It was already had one foot in the grave and I'm going to finish the job. And so, and I sat down and started reading the instructions and I said, you got to be kidding me. It can't be. I walked over there. I put the rich on it. I popped it the other way. Came loose. <laughs> Folks, I had been taught my entire life, righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. But this must have been built in Japan or China because they had it all backwards. But the truth is, I sure was glad I got that bolt out. You know, when we get help, the right help, it sure makes things a lot simpler. You know, I'm not going to say easier. A lot of times we, we misinterpret simple for easy, but it is a lot simpler. In our Psalm today, Psalm 121, if you'll please turn your Bibles there. In Psalm 121, um, we're being reminded by David, where is the right help? Where is the right direction to go in life, the right way? He gives us the place to find the right refuge, the correct guardian, and the right answers. And I believe there's a lot we can learn in this very small psalm. With that being said, let's read our text. Psalms 121. It says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Let us pray. Father, I pray that this word will be a word of encouragement for every believer in this room today. But God, I also pray that it would be a drawing to those that may not be. For God, you are everything. Forgive us when we forget that. So Father, I pray that you would lead this time. God, let me not be a distraction. Lord, let this be a time that we can grow and mature and I'll walk with you. So many people are saying what the world needs. But God, the truth is the world needs you and mature believers who faithfully share the love of Jesus Christ. We love you and we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, all God's children say, amen. Our text gives us some wonderful insight today on what is right, on what we should seek the right help. And we're all going to ask, we all, let, me, let me say it this way. We all need help. Whether it's help with a car, whether it's help with the house, whether it's help, you know, we're putting in some stairs for our house. It's, it's only a two-week project going on six months at our house, but it's only a two-week project. And, and, you know, that's why Google and YouTube are so important. Um, when me and my wife decided we were going to do this, a.k.a. me, um, she said she wanted steps, and I'm doing it. I'm kidding. She has helped. 
you took the carpet off the steps and, and that's a big help. Um, I'm going to pay for a lot of this. Um, I went to YouTube and I watched the videos. That's what we do. We need help. We go to YouTube. How many of y'all ever went to YouTube to get, it, to get help with something? Absolutely. If you have it, let me tell you something. There's a lot of people in the world out there that wants to teach you how to do things. And they make their own YouTube. Some of them even have their own YouTube channels. I mean, they're worthless, but they got them. YouTube is the true place you can go and learn how to do things and sometimes how not to. But David asked this big question. Where does my help come? Where does my help come? You see, he gives us two options here. The first is the world. During this time, the culture was rampant with pagan religion, much like today. And many of these religions performed their worship in high places or the mountains. Now see, when David would walk out on his terrace in Jerusalem, you need to understand, I, when you go to Jerusalem, Jerusalem's in a little bit of a bowl. And you can't get into Jerusalem, no matter which direction you come, you're going to have to go up over a little, they call it mountains, but it's not mountains. But what we have here is mountains. I thought I had mountains in South Carolina. We got hills in South Carolina. You got mountains out here. But, uh, but you go to Jerusalem, you have to go, and as you go in, you'll kind of go down a little bit, and there's Jerusalem. When David's day, when he would go out onto, the, onto his terrace at night, he would look out and he would see all these bonfires, all these fires littered in the high places, in the hills, in the mountains. Now, mind you, they had just finished the Sabbath, the Lord's day, the day of worship. You know, that day, but at that night, fires everywhere. And these were the fires at the pagan temples, the pagan shrines, the pagan altars, the, the uh, Asherah poles of prostitution, both male and female. And they would go out and worship false gods. They would sin before God. Now think about that for a minute. They had just worshiped the true living God. And a few hours later, many are up in the hills worshiping the things of the world. Hadn't changed much, has it? When you can drive, I, you know, it bothers me sometimes because, uh, you know, I, you get used to it when you get a little older. But I think about my boys uh, driving down the road and they see all the billboards, all the signs, all these fake, all these false temples here in Albuquerque and all over the United States. And, and they're all promising to give help. They're all promising we have the answer. And they're litter. They're, they litter all over Albuquerque. They're just everywhere. And then you get on TV and everyone's got the answer, you know? Why, I'm amazed at the answers you can get for $19.99. I mean, there's nothing you can't get for $19.99. I saw something the other day, I, 10 years ago, I would have laughed. I said, that's, that's the biggest piece of junk in the world. But, but my back got hurt and I couldn't do this. So have you any of y'all seen the new sock a mater, the sockinator, the... You put your sock on it, on your lap, you throw it in the floor, and you can stick your foot in that thing and it puts your sock on for you. It's amazing. And it comes with this shoehorn, but someone put a stick on the shoehorn. And you don't have to bend over to help, have to help with your shoes. You can just stand there like, got it. For $19.99 plus shipping and handling. And you know what really makes it a deal? They'll give you a second one for free. If you'll pay a nominal fee. Now, I don't understand it. But if you're going to pay a nominal fee for something that's free, how is it free? But that's the world, folks. And then thank God for Facebook. Because if you can't get a TV show, a radio spot, or a blog, everyone can get on Facebook. Everyone has the answers on Facebook. Why, that's where the people that go to Walmart after 12 get on to share their views of the world. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, folks, is everyone thinks they have the right answers. Everyone thinks they can tell you where to get the right help. And that's the world we live in. And David's like, where does my help come from? Does, does it come from the things of the world? You see, David understood his help was not from the, cre the creation of things. It was the creator of things. 
So he goes on to ask the question, where does my help come from? Does it come from the high places? And he says, no. He says, my help comes from the Lord. You see, you can go to the world or you can go to the Lord. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Here we have King David that's, that has literally any type of help. He, he's the king of his domain. It's like us men that are married and we go in our house and we say, thou shalt fix me a ham sandwich and bring it to me because the king has spoken. How does that work? Huh? Jeremy, how's that working, buddy? I mean, you just got married. Surely she would still do that, right? <laughs> I look at her. I do. I do. <laughs> Enjoy it while it lasts, my friend. <laughs> 24 and a half years. Thou shalt make me a ham sandwich. Psh, you get to make your own ham sandwich and make me one while you're at it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and don't forget the salt. <laughs> but here's the thing. David could have went anywhere for help. He had all these people saying they were wise. You ever met people that think they know everything? Come on now. Don't you love them? You don't have to tell them what you're thinking. They already know. God bless them. But here David is saying, my help comes from the Lord. The last couple of weeks we've been talking about the unstoppable God. The same word here, Lord, that's used, that God, that uh, David's using for Lord, is the same um, way it was used in the other text, meaning the self existent one, the eternal one, um, the one of all time. David says, I get my help from the one that's always been here. I get my help from the, matter of fact, he goes on to say, I get my help from the makers of heaven and earth. I go to the one that everyone else is running to the hills trying to get their answers. I go to the one that made the hills. I go to the one that made the mountains. You see, we, uh, David's making it very clear. His choice is the one that can only give true help. My friends, some of us live in confusion because we take God's word and we take the Holy Spirit and we try to collaborate it with the world and it causes turmoil in our hearts. Because we're trying to justify what we want to be true, yet God says, I already have it figured out. So why would David? Why would David place his truth, his help, in this unstoppable God, in the Lord? I, there's some things he gives here. We're going to look at them very briefly. The first reason he puts his faith in the Lord for help is that he's a sure foundation. It says, he will not let your foot be moved. That word moved here means to stumble. God has cleared the path of misunderstanding lies in the seat. David said, the reason I trust in the Lord is because I understand that he secures my feet. I'm not going to go the wrong way. I'm seeing people all the time go the wrong way. And people are always trying to, especially, you want to get in a frivolous debate. Tell someone you're a pastor. I'm a pastor. I've got questions. They, they don't have questions. They want to prove why we as Christians are wrong. Folks, God's already said, I, I, I've got it figured out. And if you'll follow the path, now it's not an easy path, but it is a simple path. It's the path that God's laid before us. And God's like saying, if you'll keep your feet on the path that I have laid before you, you won't stumble. I won't misguide you. You won't be misled. You have a foundation that is sure-footed. You ever tried to walk on water? You ever tried as a kid? I tried one time. I prayed. I was, I was naive. And I prayed and prayed. And I just knew I was going to walk on water. I stood at the edge of the pool. The deep end. Because if you're going to have faith, you need to be able to go like life's threatening. And I couldn't really swim, but I could dog paddle. And I was a little kid. And I said, I'm going to walk on water. I'm going to, Lord, to prove to me you're here. And I stepped on the water. And I stood there. And I opened my eyes, I wasn't standing nowhere. I was sinking. You see, but God says, if you, you stand with me, it's sure-footed. Look, I, I know a lot of things that we believe as Christians is questioning us the world. But like we talked about last week, we ain't even got figured out if eggs are good for us or not. And we place our faith in man. Let's just let the Lord guide our path and our steps. David says, I place my faith 
and the right help the Lord, but also the God is attentive. He keeps me. It, it says he keeps um, you. Will not so He who keeps you will not slumber. Ever watched a movie before and it started out and then you woke up? And the movie was over. Watch the show, and it's like two hours later, and you don't even know what show. You you were you you wanted to watch it. It's kind of like watching a Dallas football game. You can't help but fall asleep. I'm just kidding. You can say Denver, it don't matter. They're both terrible. Um, but here's the thing. Hey, 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 hey. This is my time. Um, my bike. When my bike was out not too long ago, uh, I was supposed to stay out. Uh, off my feet for a while and, and I was I mean it was fun for a day or two um, but after four or five days my family was getting tired of me for some reason um, I guess I was kind of antsy I, I hadn't been up walking or moving around or anything and um, you know so uh, we went to the movies to see Spider-Man and I figured you know after about this I, this was after eight or nine days I hadn't been out of the house and I said well they got recliners just so you know that was my idea 30 years ago I should be a millionaire. Do you know they got recliners? Power recliners in the movie theater. That's a sign that Jesus is on his way. (laughs) But I'm sitting there, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm hamming it up a little bit. Because the more I ham it up, the more loving I get. You okay? Oh, it'll be okay. (laughs) You know, so I sit down that recliner. Now, before we went... Uh, you got to understand, I, I, I don't take any type of heavy medication, really none. And, uh, and I've never had it before. But when your back is hurting so bad that you're praying that Jesus would just take you home, um, they give you medication. They gave me this stuff called oxycodone, and it starts with a V. What's it called? Uh, Valium. Now, I'm pretty sure they work pretty good all by themselves. But friends, when you put them together, it's like the Kool-Aid of life. <laughs> you don't feel nothing. Yeah, shoot me. I'm invincible. He blew never. I've got value. <laughs> but anyway, so we go in there. Don't, hey, that was under doctor's care and a prescription. But I sat down and, and I remember the movie coming on. And, and let me tell you, that movie, I remember it coming on. That's all I remember. <laughs> I dozed off. And I walked out of there with, with a sore back and sore ribs. You know how my ribs got hurt? Apparently, I fell asleep. And <laughs> I was snoring. And Tony's like, <clears throat> I'm like, <laughs> Lord, you, you thought I was trying to suck Spider-Man off the screen. But here's the thing, folks. We're not always as attentive as we should be. And I've been funny, but let me be serious. God's never surprised by what's going on in your life. He's never surprised. He's not asleep at the wheel. God didn't wake up and look at your life and go, wow, I didn't see that coming. Wow, there's no gotcha moments with God. God's attentive. He knows where you are and what's going on in your life today. I want you to leave today encouraged knowing that God knows exactly where you are in life. He knows your pains, your frustrations. He knows the hurts that you're dealing with. The ones that you're not even sharing with your spouse. The ones that you're not sharing with your mom and dad. The ones that are eating you up inside this very moment. God knows. He's not asleep. He knows what you're dealing with. He's also our protector. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The Lord is your keeper. He's your guard. Meaning he's ever present. He's not only attended to you, but he's present with you and he's your guard. He's guarding us. It's kind of like uh, when me and Tony go walking. I, I shared this first service. We go, we go walking and, and here's the, you know, I always have Tony. You got, you got to get back over here. You got, you got to stay to my left. You got to stay to my left. And y'all, why does your, why do you make your wife stay to your left? She has to stay on the sidewalk and I walk in the road. Because if someone comes and hits somebody, they'll hit me, not her. She gets so mad uh, when I say, get on left. What does it matter? I said, because you're my wife and I don't want no one to hurt you. And it's my job to protect you. Even in our own neighborhood, get on the sidewalk. Because I love you and I don't want to have to. Am I lying? 
a hundred times. Well, if you'd walk faster, would you walk too fast? She's like, <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> hey, steps are steps. But he's our protector. He's our guard. Second Thessalonians 3, 3, the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Second Corinthians 4, 8, 9. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but man, we are not destroyed. Every time I read those verses, I think of Rocky and Mickey. How many of y'all ever watch Rocky movies? Okay, if you haven't watched the Rocky movies, you're not right with God yet. I'm kidding. It's, it's a beautiful love story with blood. And, um, but, you know, Adrian. But every time Rocky gets knocked down, that old scrappy Mickey, his coach. Get up. Get up. You're not through fighting yet. Get up. And I, every time the world, now you look, you may live the perfect life. You may be walking on top of the rainbow. I don't know. But this old boy gets knocked down to the, mat, to the life, uh, to, the, um, to the floor of the world sometimes. I'm trying to think because I know she's got to interpret. And you have, am I okay? Am I going too fast? I can slow down. Okay. <laughs> you ever just want to stay face down on the mat? You ever want to quit? I mean, seriously, you ever want to quit? Am I the only one? Marriage gets hard, you want to quit on the marriage. It's not that you don't love your wife or your husband. You're just tired of it, you know? It's hard. Tired of paying the bills. There's days, as men, I don't know, there's days, though, as men, I, you may be, I may be the only one. I, Lord, I'd be better off sleeping in a tent with a grizzly bear. Not, not, you know, with the grizzly bears, not with one. You're not a grizzly bear. I got to be careful what I'm saying. Just, just, uh, and then the protector, the guard comes in and says, it's okay. You're going to finish this. You see, God's attentive. He's our protector, but he's also our confidence. David says, the sun shall not strike you. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. What it means that the sun should not strike you. It means that, that it gives the idea that God is our, our um, shade. When the pressures of the world come, God's our shade. He's our rest. He's our peace. When you're wondering how the bills are going to get paid, when you're wondering how things are going to work out, when you're wondering if your kids are going to make it, when you're wondering if your marriage is going to make it, when you're wondering if your bank account's going to make it, somewhere in the desert of life, there's a shade tree and you step underneath it and you're like, Whew. and you feel like it's going to be okay. That's what that means. God's our shade in the pressures of life. So much so that not even the moon will bother you by night. What were you saying? Well, what is that? Well, in ancient times, they believed that the rays from the moon made people crazy. And apparently that's still true because if you ain't ever been to the emergency room on a full moon night, late at night, man, there's some crazy people. You can go in there the night before, there ain't hardly a soul in there. But you go on a full moon, oh my goodness. But what it's talking about here is you won't have to, you'll be at peace at night. You ever been up late at night, you can't sleep? You're anxious? You're tossing and turning? Your mind's running a million different directions you can't understand? And then you, you ever just look at the clock? If I fall asleep right now, I'll get two hours and a half of sleep. And then 30 minutes later, if I could just fall asleep right now, Lord, I'll get two hours of sleep. Lord, please let me get 45 minutes of sleep. You ever been there? God's going to be your peace. He's going to be your confidence. Pillow your head knowing that God's going to take care of it. It's going to be all right. Psalms 4, 8. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep for you alone, O Lord. Make me dwell in safety. God is the one. Your help comes from the Lord. You, you can have peace at night. Regardless of what you want to happen, know that God's will is going to be just like you want it to be. You can have a confidence in that. And then he's also our deliverer. 
The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. That word keep here comes with the understanding. It's a little different than it was used a few moments ago. Um, it means a hedge of protection. He puts a barrier around us. We understand that in the book of Job when, when uh, Satan, Lucifer, the deceiver, uh, comes before God of eternity and, um, and, and God asks uh, Satan a question. Have you ever looked at my person, Job? Have you ever looked at Job before? And Satan tells us in Job 10.1, I mean 1.10, have you not put, this is Satan's answer. Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. I think God's taunting Lucifer a little bit. Oh, you, you, you're going out to and fro saying you could destroy uh, Lucifer. What about my, my son Job over here? That's why I named my son Job. And Lucifer says, well, God, you know, doggone well, I can't touch him. Your hand's on him. You've placed, a hedge of, you've placed a hedge of protection on every side. And you know I can't get to him. Sure, I'd like to ruin his life. Sure, I would like for him to have sin in such a way that I can wiggle my way in. But I can't do nothing to him because your hand is around him. But I tell you what, if, if I could touch him, he'd curse you. But Job didn't, did he, if you know the story. God puts a hedge of protection around us, folks. Now look, you step outside that hedge of protection. Don't blame God for what happens. But God, he, he sits there and tells Satan, no, that's my little girl. That's my little boy. You're not touching them. No matter what comes in their life, I'm going to deliver them from it because I have a hedge of protection around them. Romans 8, 28, 31, and 32. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. What shall, <clears throat> what shall we then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He that, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for, for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God's going to deliver us. God's going to take care of us. The whole purpose for Jesus was so that you could go and I could go to the one that gives the help that only he can give. Oh, if we'd stop chasing after the silly things of the world and realize that he's our sustainer. It finishes up, the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from, the time, from this time forth and forevermore. Folks, we walk the same trod everyone else walks. We're reading, I mean, we're um, breathing the same air everyone else in this world is. We deal with the same rain, the same weather, the same everything. We deal with the same pressures, the heartache, the same prejudices. We deal with all the things the rest of the world is. What is the difference between us and those without the Lord? The difference is, is God helps us. He sustains us no matter where we're going out to start the day. And when the day's over, we come in. God is always there. And he sustained us throughout the day. I'll put it this way. We know that God is not asleep on the job because he never slumbers nor sleeps. We know that God will protect us from all evil. We know that God will be with us forevermore. One of the greatest things we could do today is go to the right place for help. Folks, I'll just be honest with you. A lot of people making some real, and I hate to say it this way, but a lot of people making some real stupid decisions because they're listening to the world. Instead of the Lord. They're not allowing God to give them the right help along the way. God isn't up there waiting to punish you. He, he wants to help every one of us. Maybe this morning you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You say, I, 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 I can't answer that question. Where do you find your help? Well, I've never placed it in the Lord. You could. You could. He'll take you just like you are. 
And for those of us that know Christ, you know what needs to happen for some of us? We need to stop listening to all the nonsense of this world and just listen to Daddy. We understand that. My boys are young. They're impressionable. This old world's telling me a lot of things, and there's times I just tell them, said, look, son, I've been there. If you would just listen to me, I could help you. If you would just pay attention and heed from my mistakes. But the great thing about God, he never had to make the mistake. He just understands where sin leads. And if we choose God as our helper, he'll take care of all the things we preached on today. Where do you find your help today? Honestly, now answer that seriously. Let's go Lord in prayer. Bow your heads.